I think one fallacy that we often fall into is the idea of everybody's joints are built the same and therefore everybody's joints can move the same and therefore we all should be able to move the same amount. And that's just not the case whatsoever. How your pelvis is shaped is likely different than say how your partner's pelvis is shaped or how your kid's pelvis is shaped or how your parent's pelvis is shaped or how your neighbors or how your coworkers. And the importance of that is the shape of your joints is a large determinant to how much your joints can move and in what directions your joints can move. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast, where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Shawbrook. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie. And Julie. And we are coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And if you're looking for a way to exercise on your own while still receiving the quality of guidance that we give our clients here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, then you need to check out our virtual membership program. To learn more about this program, head to matschaumburg.com and click on the membership tab. Now today, we are talking about one of our area's expertise, and that's muscle function as it relates to exercise, as it relates to joint motion, and as it relates to a subspecialty of ours called muscle activation techniques. And in fact, we're answering a question about this that we received via email a couple weeks back. And the question is, can MAT help me to touch my toes? And so we want to dissect this question, talk about the different variables that would lead to somebody either being able to touch their toes or not being able to touch their toes, and talk about the potential role that MAT could play in helping somebody to touch their toes. First, before we begin, there are several components that we want to talk about because there are several components that will contribute to your ability to touch your toes or not. But first, I do want to acknowledge that for some reason in our culture of fitness touching your toes has now become this like standard sign of flexibility or something like that and i just want to i blame the presidential test (laughs) yes exactly in elementary school the presidential test how many pull-ups can you do well i could do zero so that means i was completely unhealthy you know whatever the sit and reach test yes so i just want to say that being able to touch your toes or not is zero percent related to your health your function and your ability to live a healthy lifestyle and do the activities that you want unless the only activity that you'd like to do is to be able to touch your toes. So I do want to let you guys know that that is not directly related or uh, correlated with your ability to be healthy, whether you can touch your toes or not. Side note, some people still want to touch their toes and or deem it important. So we have to dissect this question because a lot of people have it. The first area that we need to talk about when thinking about your body's ability to touch its toes is our structure. And when you think structure, you often, well, we often think of your skeleton, like your bones, your skeleton. And part of this this skeleton that we need to think about is your joints and specifically the amount that your joint can move. And second, your segment lengths. Yeah, you're right, Julie. Those are two huge component parts to this whole idea of whether or not somebody can touch your toes is the structure piece. And then the two parts that you named, the segment length and how much your joints can move. I think one fallacy that we often fall into is the idea of everybody's joints are built the same and therefore everybody's joints can move the same and therefore we all should be able to move the same amount. And that's just not the case whatsoever. In fact, there are some really neat pictures online. I believe the website is paulgreeley.com and I will add this to the show notes so you can check it out in the show notes. But it shows just how extreme different structures can be within a whole group of humans, meaning how your pelvis is shaped is likely different than, say, how your partner's pelvis is shaped or how your kid's pelvis is shaped or how your parent's pelvis is shaped or how your neighbors or how your coworkers. And the importance of that is the shape 
of your joints is a large determinant to how much your joints can move and in what directions your joints can move. Some people have a pelvis structure that will allow their legs or their hips to move really well front to back. Other people have a pelvis structure that allows their hips to move really well side to side. So, and I I think a really, maybe a not accurate example, but I, I think a depiction that we've maybe seen before of this is like some people can do the splits front to back and other people can do the splits side to side. And those are kind of the extremes of it. And while that may not be like actually what's happening at the joints, I, th- I think that still highlights the idea that, hey, some people have a lot of motion going one way. Some people have a lot of motion going the other way. And it is largely determined by the structure of the joints, how the joints are actually built. So this is a massive consideration when we're talking about any kind of joint motion, not just the ability for somebody to touch their toes, but their ability for somebody to reach their arm up overhead, their ability for somebody to lift their leg, their ability for somebody to you know twist their trunk. The structure of the joint is first and foremost determining how much that joint can move. You can't move further than your structure will allow. Well, you can, and what we call that is injury. And so if you want to move safely, then you can't move further than your structure can allow. And so that that's a massive consideration. I was trying to actually, when you were talking about this, I was thinking of a good analogy that everyone would know. And then I realized that actually this would be mostly um, relative to kids in the 90s. But you know what? That's when we grew up. So I'm going to give it and see if it makes sense to any of y'all because it makes sense to me. So you guys remember in 64 with, you know, those remotes that had like the three prongs coming down? Oh, yeah. What was that? Yeah. It was N64, right? And it had the three prongs coming down. That was the remote. And then in the middle, there was a joystick. Mm -hmm. Remember that joystick? Mm -hmm. So your hip is almost like that joystick, right? There's like a socket. And then there's like this stick that, you know, you take your thumb and you manipulate that joystick all around. So first of all, the hip is really interesting because if you take that remote where there's a socket and then the the joystick inside the socket if you take that socket and you take the remote and face it so like the face is facing the ceiling and you wiggle around the joystick that's how much that's the range that that joystick gets to go in and then if you took that same remote and you tilted it over to the right so now it's pointing to the right wall and you wiggle around that joystick it has the same motion, but it's in like a different spot, if that makes sense. So like the joystick does the same movements, but now it's kind of cocked to the side. So some people have like their socket, their hip socket facing different directions. Okay. So like sometimes it's facing straight out to the side or angled down, down to the side and to the front. So everyone has a different like face angle that we could say. And that makes it so that their joystick or their leg, their femur will move in a different area, a different uh, spot in the world, I guess we could say. But not only that, everyone's socket is also different. So if you think about on my N64 remote analogy, if you think about the restraints that that socket will give that joystick, like eventually if you push the joystick forward, it stops going forward at some point. Why? Because the actual structure of the remote is stopping you. And so if we could take a like exacto knife and change that socket, it would actually have a different motion, right? So this is relevant to the hip you're like all right julie let's bring this around if this is relevant to the hip because the hip everyone's hip joint everyone's hip socket i guess we could say not only is facing a different direction like the first example i gave where you know at one point it could be facing the ceiling and then we could tip it and face it to the right side not only do they all have different directions but they also have different shapes because with the with the example when I gave the exacto knife where we could carve out different shapes and then the the joystick could move in different spots, everyone's hip socket has a slightly different shape and some have drastically different shapes and so everyone's hip structure will will invite its hip to move differently. So I hope that makes sense with the joint motion piece. Well. And to that point, you know, I think oftentimes this idea is forgotten just in the general fitness industry because we nece- we can't necessarily see people's joints outside looking in, right? But 
it's very conceivable that this is actually the case. I mean, well, we know it's the case because we can see on x-rays and, you know, with cadavers and everything like that. But it it's also conceivable because, I mean, if you just look around, look how differently people are built. Like some people are built taller. Some people are built shorter. Some people are built, you know, wider side to side. Some people are built thicker front to back. And so there's clearly different size of structure and different shape of structure that we can see outside looking in. But for whatever reason, when it comes to like the joints itself, we all think, oh, everybody should be able to fold forward. Oh, everybody should be able to do, I don't know, downward dog or whatever it is. And that's just frankly not the case. But we wouldn't say, well, everybody should be able to reach up to the top shelf because we could look around and find a five-year-old and say, well, they can't reach up to the top shelf. And it's not just about like getting them to reach higher. Like structurally, they're not able to. And we're able to accept that. But for some reason, when it comes to a joint motion, we think, oh, if we just try a little harder. Oh, if we just push it a little further. Oh, if we just keep doing this over time, we'll be able to do it. And your, your structure is not built to do that. That's not going to be the case unless you're willing to injure yourself. And I'm guessing for most of the people who are asking the question, you know, should I be able to touch my toes? And can MAT help me touch my toes? They're probably not willing to injure themselves in the process of trying to touch their toes. It's just not important enough. And so because of that, we have to acknowledge that there are some very real limitations that we're going to run into whenever we're talking about doing something from a joint motion perspective. And if we're trying to kind of keep up with the crowd or do the, uh, you know, do what everybody else is doing, we have to acknowledge that, well, our structure is different than everybody else's. Everybody else's structure is different than my own. And so because of that, we're all going to have different amounts of motion, just plain and simple just starting out to begin with. You're right, Charlie. It makes a really good point, especially with the idea that when we are moving our bodies, we're moving our joints. And oftentimes we see the external because that's what we can visually see, but really inside and under our skin, it is our joints that are essentially making all that motion. Another thing often that people often don't acknowledge and don't think about are our segment lengths. Again, we usually can acknowledge, can I touch my toes or can I not? But one of the hugest pieces are in our next point here is segment length plays a huge role into are you able to touch your toes? Now, if you think about touching your toes, there's a bend that's happening at the hips. And then also usually people are bending their spine forward. One piece that it boils down to is what is the length of your legs relative to how far your arms are able to reach, right? And so your arms, your arm length will play into this and also your torso length will play into this. Let's say you're someone that has giant, really long legs and a really short torso. Well, here's the interesting thing is usually when people have long legs, they sometimes have long arms. So sometimes the long arms can make up for the lack of reach that your torso will give you. But maybe you have really long legs and a shorter torso and regular length arms. So your torso really won't be able to reach very far relative to the length of your legs. And that doesn't mean that you're not flexible. It just could mean that you have really long legs and average length torso and arms. Vice versa, you might have kind of regular length legs, regular length arms, and a really long torso. And so what this will allow for is that your torso can really reach really far relative to others because of the length there. And so you might be able to easily touch your toes. Yeah, I think the key component to this idea is that it's not the length of your legs relative to your neighbors or the length of your arms relative to your neighbors. It's the length of your legs relative to the length of your torso relative to the length of your arms. Like it's all about how long are each of those component parts within you. And so if like Julie was saying, you're somebody that has really long legs in a shorter torso, it's going to be more difficult, even if you have longer arms to go and reach and touch your toes. Whereas if your length of your torso and the length of your legs are closer and your arms are kind of right smack dab in the middle there, it might be easier for you to reach your toes because with your torso, you're going to be able to lean further forward or you're going to have the potential opportunity to lean further forward 
forward, get your arms closer to your toes without even having to reach out. And then from there, if you have, you know, normal size arms or whatever even that means, you, it'll be easier for you to reach your toes. So again, re, being able to touch your toes is not necessarily a sign of flexibility so much as it may be a sign of, well, proportionately, your legs are relatively the same length as your torso and arms kind of combined. And so, okay, cool. I, I don't know that that means anything. It might be easier for you to, you know, fit in clothes in the department store. You don't have to special order your suits or whatever. So good for you. That, but I mean, from a flexibility health perspective, I, I don't know that it actually makes any kind of difference. Yeah, that's a really good point with the, it's all relative to your own body proportions are all relative to, well, what else is there? And I think that oftentimes we always think, oh, I have really long legs or, oh, I have really long arms or my torso is super short. But just as Charlie was saying, those don't really matter. What matters is how they relate to the other parts of your body. That's why it's like relatively. So it really relates to the other parts of your body. And it's not that being proportionate is healthy or being disproportionate is healthy or being proportionate will help you be flexible, which means you're healthy. So remember, there is no magical, you know, solution or magical rainbow that appears once you can touch your toes. But we're again, we're just talking about factors that feed into this ability to touch your toes. Now, the next component part, the big component part that we need to talk about when it comes to touching your toes is soft tissue. And we're going to break this down into two different aspects. We're going to talk about mass of soft tissue and function of soft tissue. Okay, So first of all, let's talk about the mass of the soft tissue. And let's define what we actually mean by soft tissue to begin with. Okay, And, and you know, this is a bit oversimplified, but for the sake of this conversation, it works well. In this context, what we're talking about for soft tissue is is muscle and fat, okay? And so when we're talking about the mass of those, we're talking about like how much fat do you have, how much muscle do you have, and how is it kind of like proportioned throughout your body, okay? Do you have like really thick legs? Do you have a bigger abdomen? Do you have, you know, a bigger shoulders or whatever? All of those are going to have an influence over how well the joints that they cross can move, okay? How well the joints in the area can move. And so with with something like reaching forward to touching your toes, if you have a bigger abdomen, uh, you know, w- whether it's from from adipose tissue, fat tissue or whatever, it's going to be more more difficult for you to reach forward and actually touch your toes because you have this larger mass right in front of you that you are essentially folding into or that your spine is folding into when you're trying to fold forward. So that's going to be more difficult. It's going to run into your thighs faster which that's going to then, you know, compress against the the muscle on the top of your thighs and that will block the motion going forward. Again, it's not an indication of how well your joints can move, but it's a consideration for whether or not you're able to touch your toes. It's almost like there there's physical blocks yes. for you to be able to move. It's not a function thing, but it's like there's physically something in the way. So definitely the muscle tissue and the fat tissue can be physically in the way of you being able to move in this certain manner. Now, the big one that you guys have been waiting for, almost like we get a drum roll here, is the muscle function. Oh. And oftentimes when we think about touching our toes, we all think about muscle function. And usually we're thinking about something called flexibility, which is like, okay, well, how flexible can I be? Or how much can I stretch the muscles? And if you've been listening to our podcast even once before, Mm -hmm. you know that we talk about stuff that normal people don't talk about. And that is talking about how muscle is functioning and not just how much you can stretch or push yourself or how much you can go hard with the gym and things like that. So here's the thing with the role of MAT and touching your toes. Muscle activation techniques looks for muscles that are not able to do their job. And their job, all muscles have one job, which is contract and relax when appropriate. And so MAT looks at the body and says, hey, where is your body not contracting well? Let's go service that area. And that's what we do as MAT specialists. But there are some very, very common side effects and some cool things that have, well, not cool, interesting things happen when muscles are not functioning at their best and not able to contract at their best. And one of the most common side effects of muscles not contracting well is 
tightness, which is a sensation, but the actual physical component of that is uh, like a muscle restricting you from motion, a muscle kind of staying chronically contracted or not allowing or not being able to fully relax or disengage. And what MAT, what we find with MAT is that when we get muscles functioning better, contracting better, doing better at their job, doing better at their specific role in the body, then other muscles start to not restrict you from motion. So when most people are working on toe touching, they're oftentimes trying to increase flexibility in their butt, in their hamstrings, and in their low back. And often this is done by stretching or foam rolling or trying to do something that directly lengthens these tissues. Muscle activation techniques will only look at what muscles are unable to do their job well, what muscles are unable to contract well. And whatever results come from that, those are the results that you get. Yeah, I mean, just to speak to this from a client perspective and from, from a, I should say, a client testimonial perspective, rather, is it's not uncommon for clients to come in and, you know, at the beginning of the session, they're kind of reaching forward towards their toes and they're maybe able to get like to their ankle. Maybe it's, you know, not even that far. Maybe it's like their mid shin. And by the time the session ends, they're getting to their toes. They're getting past their toes. But it's not to Julie's point. It's not because with MAT, we are, it, we're not stretching them. We're not trying to get muscles to relax or release. Or we're not even trying to get their joints to move better. Our sole purpose is to get their muscles contracting better. And like Julie said, when muscles contract better, other muscles that are having to do too much, other muscles that are maybe tightening up, all of a sudden those muscles can relax and the muscles that were previously not working well, they can pick up more of the workload. And then as a result, oftentimes what we see is the joints that those muscles cross start to move better. And it's really cool to see how much somebody's motion can improve without stretching, without doing any kind of releasing techniques, without doing any kind of like relaxation techniques, but simply by getting their muscles contracting better. And so to kind of speak to the question that was being asked, like it's not uncommon at all for somebody to come in, not be able to touch their toes. And, you know, after kind of working on them for that session, they're then able to touch their toes depending on where in their body we're working. But that's not the goal of MAT. That doesn't necessarily indicate that, okay, because they can touch their toes, they're necessarily healthier, but because their joints are able to move more, that may be an indication that their muscles are functioning better potentially. I guess the re the real key to that is if the muscles are contracting better, then their joints move better. And so by getting their muscles contracting better and seeing their joints move better, that again is just a further indication that, okay, now your muscles are working better, which is the goal of MAT. So that is one really neat thing that we see from a, hey, let's get your muscles functioning better standpoint, and then how it relates to mobility, how it relates to flexibility, and how it relates to these kind of improvements in joint motion. Charlie, you bring up a good point because a lot of people do not put those two together, which is get my muscles functioning better and I'll be able to move better. And because I don't think we relate Number one, muscle function with movement. And then I don't think we also say movement is similar to flexibility. Mm -hmm. Like I think that that's often hugely missed. Mm -hmm. And MAT will help you and allow you to touch your toes if your structure will allow it. If you don't have the physical blocks of the fat tissue and muscle tissue in the way. And if you have appropriate segment length. And because muscle activation techniques is, is trying to allow your muscles to fully utilize and move within its structural limits. And so if your structural limits say, yeah, we can touch our toes, then you will do it. If it doesn't, you won't. And that's okay because both are fine. Both are healthy. The big takeaway thing they'll hear, I think, is that it's not a sign of health to be able to touch your toes. But in my opinion, it is a sign of health to be able to move your body fully and whatever we decide is fully right. But to be able to move and not be in, not get injured when you move and to be able to move and continue 
and continuously work to move more as long as you're staying strong and stable while you're doing that. You're not turning off muscles, shutting down muscles, making your system more vulnerable, weaker. So I think that the important thing again here is that, you know, you're maximizing how much you're able to move, but that doesn't always mean touching your toes well it's kind of interesting to your earlier point of this idea that we don't necessarily relate like muscle function to flexibility and muscle function to mobility because if you were to ask somebody okay raise your arm up overhead and then all right what allowed you to bring your arm up overhead the logical answer is well your muscles and for whatever reason if we can't bring our arm up overhead We might not say that it's our muscles that aren't allowing us to do that, right? We might say, okay, well, you know, like I raised my arm up overhead. Yep, that's fine. And then one day I can and it's like, oh, like my lats and stuff are too tight. Like it's it's always something that's too tight, okay? But what if I gave you, you know, like a hundred pound dumbbell and you were holding that and I asked you to raise your arm up overhead and you're like, well, now I'm not able to. Is it because that, you know, your lats and stuff are too tight or is it because, the muscles that should be lifting your arm up overhead can't work well enough, right? And and so we're so we're looking we're looking at that example like there's still a like you can't move your joint well enough. And in the example where it's just your arm versus the example where it's you know you're holding a hundred pound dumbbell, the only difference there is not necessarily that like one side got tighter or or anything like that, but it's that the side that is supposed to be working, that's supposed to be lifting your arm, they it doesn't have the physical capability to do that. You know, to do it with a hundred pounds versus doing it with just the weight of your arm. And so if we kind of talk about it in that example, then oftentimes we can see that, oh yeah, okay, well, maybe it's not actually that my lats are tight, that that's why I can't my reach reach my arm up overhead, but maybe it's because like things like my my deltoids are too weak. They're not able to do that well enough. And so I think that for whatever reason that idea is lost, when we, we're talking about joint motion, when we're talking about flexibility, when we're talking about mobility, that your muscles have to be strong enough in order to be able to do those things. And if for whatever reason they're not strong enough to do that, then guess what? Your joints won't be able to move in that way because your body needs strength. Your muscles have to have a certain amount of output in order to be able to create joint motion. And so if that output is limited, your joint motion is going to be limited. And it's not necessarily just because things on the opposite side of the joint are too tight. Charlie, you make a really good point. And I have to say that for my own body, and I know you do this for you as well because we talk about it all the time, is that whenever you and I feel like we can't move somewhere very well or we're feeling some experience of tightness or something is limiting us or bothering us, the first thing that we do is let's eliminate the muscle system. But what's interesting is that a lot of people we talk to, people that we talk to in different meetings that we go to or our, our own clients, they always jump to something that's not muscle related. And it's not that it's not muscle related, but I always think let's just eliminate the muscles because they play such a huge role. So for example, like if someone comes in and their their back is tight and you know, this is one of the things that people are like, well, my back is tight, I can't touch my toes anymore or my back is tight, I can't rotate or play golf or whatever. The first thing they usually think of is not like, hey, let me just make sure my muscles are working well. <laughs> Get that taken care of and see what happens. Normally it's like, oh, I think my, my disc just slipped or, <laughs> you know, I, I must have slept weird or, you know, and I personally think one of the most non-invasive things that we can possibly do for any issue, whether you have a structural thing going on, like a disc issue or, you know, bone spurs or whatever is, let's just maintenance the muscles and see what that takes care of. And I, and I think it's interesting that just because of all the experiences that we've had with MAT and the things that were like, wow, I wasn't expecting that amazing change that just happened is that I just want to do that non-invasive thing tune up my muscle system and see what happens first before I go assuming that, you know, I'm just, I've I've deemed myself just completely inflexible or, you know, unable to do these things or that I've now like irritated a bursa in my hip or, you know, whatever. Just get your muscles maintenance. That's what I'd like to share. (laughs) Well, it's such a great point, you know. Public service announcement. Yeah, for sure. Before we go, you know, jumping to more extreme conclusions about, you know, this or that or the other thing is going on. Like you're saying, let's just take care of the muscle system first. Just get your muscles tuned up. Make sure that things are working well. And then see how much that actually affects what's going on. 
It might not affect it at all. It might affect it very little. It might be a huge component. It might completely take care of it. But at least you, you get that piece off the board so you know that if nothing else, now your muscles are working better and now everything else can kind of follow suit with whatever you're doing. So can MAT help you touch your toes? Possibly. You know, for if touching your toes is an absolute must for you, it may be something you want to consider. But there are a lot of influences that come into being able to touch your toes from the structure of your joints and how much your joints can actually move to your relative segment length, to how the mass of your soft tissue is distributed throughout your body, and then finally, how well your muscles are functioning. So if your muscles are not functioning well, getting them tuned up with muscle activation techniques may help you get closer to reaching the goal of touching your toes. Is it a surefire thing? No, because there are other components, but it can help trend you in that direction for sure. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that feels like they're not flexible enough, feels like they're losing joint motion, or maybe they actually do want to touch their toes and they're getting frustrated that they can't? Share this episode with them so they can hear about the different components that come into touching your toes and come into joint motion and flexibility and improving all those things and the role that MAT can play in helping with that. And while you're online, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find this podcast who are looking for information on health, who are looking for information on exercise, and they are searching for podcasts because it helps us show up higher in those search results. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week.